All right, welcome to part two of our clay projects. We are studying and learning about pop artists. And pop artists found everyday objects and turned those just normal everyday things into art. And that's what we're gonna do in our clay project. Um, look for something that you actually have around your house or something that you kind of are fond of or um, maybe it's your phone, maybe it's the type of food you eat, maybe it's um, the kind of gum you chew. Um, you try to figure out something that is interesting to you. Now this tutorial is going to talk about how to make something that is a cylinder. It can be something like a pop can, Pringles can, so maybe something even shorter uh, like a um, I know someone has made a layer cake using this cylinder form. We're basically focusing on the, f the form. I want you to come up with something that you want to make in this, um, uh, uh, the, pro the project is up to you, but this is the form that we're going to, to use as a tutorial today. Um, so think of something that you would like to make. I have at your disposal a pattern piece that we'll use for this um, pop can. This is my pop can pattern. Now if you want to make something a little different like perhaps maybe you wanted to make a coffee cup which is still a cylinder or an ice cream cone. It's still a cylinder but it's narrower at the bottom than it is at the top. So what your job is at the, at the beginning is to figure out what you want to make and then if you need to uh, make something other than this pop can pattern, create that pattern piece that you need to make. So if it's something shorter like a cupcake, figure out what kind of pieces that you're going to need for that. So this is a cupcake, it's more uh, tapered at the bottom, it's a little larger and then from there you can add the toppings or perhaps the icing of the cupcake is your lid. So that we are making a container, finding something every day, something interesting, um, and making a container from that project. So now this is my pattern for the pop can. If you forget the steps for this project, I do have this handy dandy visual that you can go by that will be available to you to look off of to remember some of the steps if you forgot some of the steps. Okay, so your first step is to get some clay and you'll have a set of tools and spray bottle and sponges at your tables and you're going to get clay. Now sometimes with clay it gets kind of thrown together in the bag sometimes and I always tell students to wedge the clay. It really Really is the most important step. Any air bubbles, you do want this clay to be uniformed. Plus, when you're rolling it out, um, if it's lumpy, if it's got uh, inconsistencies there, it is a little bit harder to roll out. So wedge it, which means you're just push and turn, push and turn, and get it a nice consistency. Now you can also start beginning to flatten it. Okay, so flatten this out. You can use this. You can kind of pound it on the table a little bit. If you do it at an angle like this, it will start to stretch and flatten. Do it in a couple directions and flatten it out. Now, um, I am wanting to roll out this clay. Use the stilts. There are a couple of sizes. I would use the, oh, I don't know, like these are half inch. There are a couple of sizes. I wouldn't use the tiniest of sizes. I would use the two larger of the sizes. Now you're going to roll this out so that you have a consistent thickness throughout. Um, I would suggest your clay be about a quarter of an inch to a half inch thick. Then you're going to get your pattern and you're going to trace it out. Now I would cut out things with this knife tool or this needle tool. Either one works pretty good. Cut out that shape. Discard the excess clay. And here I have my uh, cylinder. All right, now I need a base. Okay, roll out another piece of clay. Use the pop can top or bottom pattern piece. Use your tools, cut it out. Pull away the excess, put it aside. Now, whenever we join clay to clay, 
it, this is very important also. When clay shrinks, which it's going to, we're gonna lose some size a little bit here. It's gonna shrink maybe two to 10%. And when things are not joined well together, they um, tend to fall apart or crack in those places that are not joined well. Create kind of a glue here. This is slip and scoring. So create kind of a glue there. Score both both sides pieces that you're going to join together. Score and slip. Now I'm also going to be joining this to make this into a cylinder. So I'm going to score the sides that are going to be joined on the side as well. All right, join together, put a little compression, and that means when you've joined those together, put a little pressure on it, push those together. Now I've got this joint here that I'm going to very ge gently coerce together. All right, there we go. Now I have a, a set of tools these kind of stick tools, there's even some popsicle sticks, things like that, you're gonna use those to join them together. Once you've pressed them together, pushed them together a little bit, you're going to use those tools to join together. I do like kind of a flat, um, t tool. Now initially, I'm just going to, my job, is to join these together so that they're married together forever. We don't want the heat to come on and there be a divorce, okay? So they are going to stay together. Now I'm gonna clean this up here shortly, but first of all, I want to make sure they're together. Now I'm gonna use one of the tools that maybe is a little longer and I'm gonna get down in here and join it on this side as well and make that all beautiful. All right, so now once I've got that joined together really well and we're looking pretty good so far, I'm going to take my rib. This is a rib and I've got several types of wooden ribs and they really do a nice job of smoothing out those seams and making them pretty again. I also have found with the, the cylinders especially that to use the paddle. I have noticed that there, there gets to be kind of a dip here in the bottom. So this paddle can get those sides nice and flat and even again. And I know with a pop can there is kind of a bit of a, oh, if you can see here, it, it goes in a little bit along the bottom. So you could also add that detail. All right, once you get that going, and you got that looking pretty. Now this is bigger than this, but there is gonna be a little bit of shrinkage. It's going to shrink just a little bit. And we've got the idea anyway. Now you wanna make the lid. You're gonna roll out a clay again, find your pop can pattern, and you're gonna roll it out. And you're also gonna add this rim here. It is really important, and I have this example here of this one I just made, is this rim. I want this lid not to come off. And so for it to sit on there, I'm going to um, create that little piece there. And all as you do is just make a circle that's a little bit smaller. Make sure that you score and slip this very well both pieces. I have found in the past that this is the part that just kind of wants to fall apart. So get some good scoring and slipping and press those together. Now this might be a little big. Yep, I'm gonna need to trim away. So take the time to trim away. Or before you score it and attach it, you may just want to Oops, if that's going to come off of there, I got that on there pretty good. Fit it. Make sure it works on there. Okay, I need to trim that away before I attach it. That might be the better option. Because you actually don't want this to fit perfectly. You want it just a little bit loose so that if 
um, no matter what direction it's sitting on there, it fits. Okay, and that's probably the hardest part with um, lids is they don't always want to sit nicely on there. So once you got that going, I want you to take a little time to clean this up, make that look beautiful again, trim away, put it on there and make sure it's going to fit nice, maybe a little bit looser, trim away a little bit of this perhaps, just to make sure that it fits loose and not tight. Because sometimes if it's not loose, it's not going to fit on there nice. And it's like, oh, Miss Davidson, this is great, but it isn't, my lid doesn't fit. You really do want it just as a precaution, fitting loose. Also, I would fit it so that it, it fits on there nicely. And that's where your paddle, again, can get it so that it looks good and feel, fits good. All right, so once you've got that, and here's my example here I kind of had just finished. I got it nicely smoothed out and fitted on there. Now, I added this little pop tab. I basically made a piece of clay, kind of shaped it, the, it looks similar to a pop tab, and attached it there. Once I was all done, I smoothed out, used that rib, used your sponge, smooth it out, put your initials on the bottom. Um, if you decide that you're not done, you will be putting this on a board, uh, maybe giving it a little bit of uh, moisture, spritz it a little bit, and wrap it all up in the bag so that the next time you come, it still looks like this and has not hardened. Once it hardens, it gets a little bit more difficult to work with. If you are done, I want you to separate the two pieces and set them down together. You may even want to add your initials in a small amount so that they don't get separated. There are a few pop there will be a few pop cans and I have had students get theirs mixed up. Put your initials on the bottom, put them together, let them sit over there like this. I will be draping them lightly so they dry out kind of slow. And then in about a week, I will fire them. Once they're fired, um, it'll be like this, kind of white. It'll be hard like that and ready to go. And then we'll proceed to talk about glazing them. We'll draw on our design, glaze them, and um, it'll look something like this. All right, so once you're all finished, extra clay goes back in the bag, tools go back in the bucket, um, wash up, sponge off your tables, ready to go. Look for my other tutorial that will be available for the clay box.